Hello and welcome students. Today we will discuss the new topic that is traces in the bars of different sections. In previous lecture we have studied about the traces in compound bars. Compound bar means the bars which are joined together to form a compound bar. Okay, But in that case the different bars are of same cross section area, same cross section areas. But you can see in this figure the bars are of different cross section area. Suppose bar AB is having cross section area A1, bar BC is having cross section area A2 and bar CD is having cross section area A3. And the total compound bar A to D is subjected to load tensile load of P as shown in figure. Sometimes the bar is made up of different length and having different cross section area as shown in this figure. Okay. So now L1 is the length of the first bar, L2 is the length of second bar and L3 is the length of second bar. So this is the compound bar consisting of three different bars of different cross section areas and different lengths. In such cases, the stresses, strains and hence changes in length for each section is worked out separately as usual. Okay, so the total changes in the length is equal to the sum of the changes of all individual lengths. It may be noted that each section is subjected to same external axial push or pull. So we have to balance this load okay and we have to find delta L or the required unknown values. Let us see how it works. See the calculation and derivation of formula. Let P. What is P? P is equal to force acting on the body. What is E? Modulus of elasticity for the body. Modulus of elasticity for the body. L1 is equal to length of section 1. A1 equal to cross section area of section 1. L2A2 is equal to corresponding values of section 2 and so on. For the third section, for the fourth section, for the fifth section. We know that change in length, the formula of change in length delta L is equal to PL by A. Now here delta L for the part 1 it is. So it will be P L1 upon A1E. L1 and A1 containing suffix 1 for part number 1 but P and E remains constant because P for the entire compound bar will remain same but E is also considered as the same if the material of all the different cross sections will be same. Similarly delta L2 is equal to PL2 upon A2E because E remains same as we have assumed that all the different cross section bars are made up of same materials and so on. What is total deformation of the bar? Total deformation delta L is equal to delta L1 plus delta L2 plus delta L3 and so on. Now, what is delta L1? P L1 upon A1E, P L2 upon A2E, P L3 upon A3E is equal to P by E. Now, check here P by E is constant. So, it will be taken common. And A1 by A1 plus L2 by A2 plus L3 by A3 is in the bracket. So this is the final formula to calculate delta L. Sometimes what happens? The different cross sections are made up of different materials. So E, Young's modulus, will not be common out. It is as usual in the bracket. It will be like this. L1 upon A1, E1 plus L2 upon A2, E2 plus L3 upon E3, E3. Like that. So this is the final formula to find the deformation to find the delta L. Okay, now see example 3.1. An automobile component shown in figure is subjected to a tensile load of 160 kN. You can see tensile load is 160 kN over both the ends. Here there are two different cross sections. AB is 50 mm square and BC is 100 mm square. Length of both the sections are 90 mm and 120 mm respectively. What we have to determine? Determine the total elongation means delta L of the component. If its modules of modulus of elasticity is 200 gigapascal. Let us check the solution and the given data. Tensile load P is equal to 160 kN is equal to 160 10 to 3 Newton. Length L1 for the section 1 is 90 mm. Length L2 for the section 2 is 100 mm. And area of section 1 A1 is equal to 50 mm square. Area of section 2 A2 is equal to 100 mm square. Modulus of elasticity is equal to 200 into 10 raised to 3 Newton per mm square. Now what is the formula for elongation? Delta L is equal to, there are two sections 
right over here. So there will be the formula like delta L equal to P by E, L1 by A1 plus L2 by A2. Now this is very simple numerical as all the values are readily available to you. Okay, so all the sections are all the values are readily available. Replace P equal to 160 into 10 raised to 3. E equal to 200 into 10 raised to 3 by unit conversion as it is given in gigapascal. We have to convert it in megapascal. So in the bracket L1 is equal to 90 mm, A1 is equal to 50 mm square plus L2 equal to 120 mm square and A2 equal to 100 mm square. So all the values are replaced correctly and by solving in the calculator delta L is equal to 2.4 mm. So this 2.4 mm is the total entire length of this body 2.4 mm then okay so this is very basic numerical let us go ahead this is the numerical number two you can check in the numerical what is given to you a member formed by connecting a steel bar to an aluminum bar so now see over here there are two different materials first one is steel bar and second one is aluminum bar as shown in figure so this is the steel bar 50 cross 50. Now what is 50 cross 50? It means it is a rectangular cross section like this. Okay, 3D. So its width is 50 and its height is also 50. So cross section area, cross section area will be rectangle like this. Okay, which is 50 by 50. So 2500 should be the area of cross section. Now second one is aluminum bar of dimension 100 cross 100. Length of the steel is 300 mm and length of the aluminum is 380 mm. Assuming that the bars are prevented from buckling sidewise, the bars are prevented from buckling sidewise, calculate the magnitude of force P. Calculate the magnitude of force P. Now, here the force P is compressive. Okay, the force P is compressive, so deformation will be decreasing. Calculate the magnitude of force P that will cause the total length of the member to decrease. See over here, the total length of the member is decreasing by 0.25. So delta L is given. So this is the reverse sum. Here delta L is given to us and we have to calculate force P, compressive force P. The value of elastic modulus means Young's modulus of steel and aluminum. Both are different materials. So two Young's modulus are given over here. First one is 210 gigapascal means 210 into 10 raised to 3 megapascal for still and 70 gigapascal for aluminium so 70 into 10 raised to 3 solution given data decrease in length delta L is already given to us 0.25 mm modulus of elasticity for steel is 210 into 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square for aluminium ea is equal to 70 into 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square and area of steel section is equal to 50 50 2500 mm square for the aluminium, 100 cross 100 is equal to 10,000 mm square. So possibly all the values are given to you. Length of the section is for the steel is 300 mm and for the aluminium is 380 mm. So given data is very clear. Only the change is that delta L is given to us and we have to calculate P now. So according to the formula, let us assume that P equal to magnitude of the force which is in kilonewton. Remember, this is in kilonewton. Now formula is delta L is equal to P by E actually but now E is different for both the materials so E will be in the bracket okay so delta L is over here in over right side P in the bracket L upon A1 even L1 upon A1 even L2 upon A2 A2 like this okay so for the steel material LS upon AS ES LA upon AA EA okay so all the values are readily available, 0.25 will remain as it is till the end, over right side P will remain constant and other values are given to you. So replace other values in this formula and by doing calculation you will get the term 780P upon 700 into 10 to 6. Make the P as a subject and formula will become like this. By solving in the calculator you will get the answer to 24.4. 10 raised to 3 Newton. So you can see by this method you can find P. We have to find key P in kilo Newton as given over here. So it will be 224.4 kilo Newton. So this is the numerical number 2 which is also very very easy. What is the difference between
in numerical 1 and numerical 2 is only that in the first sum p is given to us and we have to check delta l. In the second numerical delta l is given prior to us and we have to calculate push force p. Let us see example number 3 and what is the difference in that. This is the example number 3 and very most important. A 6 meter long hollow bar of circular section has 140 mm diameter. Okay, this is the circular section of 140 mm diameter for a length of 4 meter. You can see over here, this is the 140 mm diameter over for the length of 4 meter only. For the first 4 meter length only means up to length AB only. Total bar is 6 meter long, so remaining 2 meter length is over here from B to C. Well, it has 120 mm diameter for a length of 2 meter. So, this for this 2 meter, the diameter will be 120 mm. Remember this 140 and 120 is outer diameters only. The bore diameter is 80 mm throughout. Bore diameter means inside diameter of the hollow bar, which is 80 mm over here. You can see 80 mm throughout. So, for both the lengths, inside diameter will remain same 80 mm. Now, this is the circular cross section or you can see side view of the pipeline which shows external diameter and internal diameter respectively. The bar is subjected to tensile force of 300 kN from both the ends. Find the elongation means find delta L of the bar when it is subjected to axial tensile force of 300 kN. So it is subjected to axial tensile force of 300 kN as shown in figure. Take modulus of elasticity for the bar material as 200 gigapascal. So again over here, the Young's modulus will remain same, means both the bar is made up of same materials. Let us check the given data. Total length is 6 meter, means 6 into 10 raised to 3 mm. Diameter of section 1, D1 equal to 140 mm. Section L1, length of section L1, 4 into 10 raised to 3 mm. Diameter of section 2, D2 is equal to 120 mm. Length of section L2, is equal to 2 meter 2 into 10 ratio 3 mm. Inner diameter D1 is equal to D2 for both the section it is equally and 80 mm. Axial tensile force is 300 kN means 300 into 10 ratio 3 over here it is pending mistake 10 ratio 3 newton. Remember this. And modulus of elasticity E equal to 200 gigapascal means 200 into 10 ratio 3 newton per mm square. Let us see the solution. Now as the bar is hollow so, we have to calculate the cross section area like this pi by 4 d1 square minus small d1 square. Capital D1 denotes the external diameter while small d1 denotes the internal diameter. So, a1 is equal to pi by 4 140 square minus 80 square is equal to you can calculate in the KLC 3300 pi mm square. You can remain, you can keep pi as a constant also or you can keep uh, in the calculator also and you will find the total uh, round up answer. Okay, for the second part A2 is equal to again the same formula but replace D2 and small d2 over here which will be 120 and 80 as shown in the figure. So answer will be 2000 pi mm square. Now what we have to calculate? We have to calculate elongation of the bar. So delta L is equal to PL upon A again the same formula. E will be common out now again as in example number 1 because both the materials are made up of same material. So replacing the values 300 into 10 raised to 3, 200 into 10 raised to 3 and the remaining values are as it is. The length is in meter so it is converted by 10 raised to 3. So final answer will be delta L equal to 1.054 mm. So this is the total elongation of the hollow circular object which is 1.054 mm. Very, very simple numerical. Only you have to uh, concentrate on the cross section area. Formula is changing here for the cross section area itself. Let us see one more example 3.4. A compound bar ABC 1.5 meter long. Here the bar is vertical. See this. AB is aluminum bar and BC is steel bar. Having length LA means length of aluminum. LS means length of steel. But the total length is given 1.5 meter. Now, aluminum bar, we are, here it is given that cross section area of aluminum bar is twice of the steel bar. Means cross section area AA is equal to 2 times AS. The road is subjected to axial tensile load of 200 kN. So, over here 200 kN tensile load is acting. 
if the elongation of the aluminium and steel parts are equal means elongation delta l for both the parts are equal so delta l a is equal to delta l s find the lengths of the two parts of the compound bar means we have to find lengths of both the parts la and ls take e for steel as 200 gigapascal e for aluminium as e for steel is 200 gigapascal given to you over here and e for aluminium is one third of steel means you can calculate 200 by 3 so it will be like 66.6600 we have to calculate this to lens let us see what happens now here for the elongation of part ab means aluminium delta L, the formula will be pl upon ae p will be remains same for both the objects which is given as 210 to 3 length of aluminium is not available uh, in the division area of aluminium is equal to 2 times area of steel relation is given in the data and ea is ha, sorry one third of steel means 210 to 3 by 3 by simplification you will get this relation so delta l a is equal to 1.5 la by as it is equation number one similarly for the part two bc means steel part delta l steel is equal to prs upon as es p is remaining same 210 to 3 length is not available area of steel keep as it is young's modulus is given as 210 to 3 so it will be like this ls upon as so this is the relation for delta l of steel second equation but what is given in the data equation 1 and 2 both are same because in the data it is given that elongation of both the objects will be same so delta l for aluminium which is equation number 1 and delta l for steel which is equation number 2 both are same now what is area so area of steel and area of steel how it is uh, both are equal as as so it is also even in the data cross section area of the steel and cross section area of the aluminium is same so here as or you can say a aluminium will be cancelled out with area of steel so final relation will be length of steel is equal to 1.5 times length of aluminium we also know that length of the bar abc l total length is equal to la plus ls now total length is 1.5 in meters so it is 10 raised to 3 in mm now la as it is and what is the relation ls is equal to 1.5 la so total will be 2.5 la so compare this 1.5 into 10 raised to 3 with with 2.5 la so you will get the answer of la like 600 mm so just subtract 600 mm from the total length 1.5 10 raised to 3 so you will get the answer of length of steel which is 900 mm so this is a typical example for calculating the length of the bar so summarize the numericals in the first numerical all the things are given and we have to calculate delta l in the second numerical Young's modulus for both the materials are different. In third numerical, a reverse term is there in which delta L is given to you and we have to find P, means load applied on the body. Or in the fourth numerical, all the things are given but length of both the components are not given. In place of that, some relations are given like area of cross sections are same, length will be different elongations of both the materials are same so with the help of that we have calculated the length of both the objects so just revise this numerical we will meet in the next lecture till then goodbye